and I think I've gone into the spotlight. That's why I better introduce <laughs> myself to everyone. So I'm Georgie Hill, for those of you who haven't met, but I can see some friendly faces that have popped up as well. So I'm Georgie Hill. I'm the Director of People, Partnerships and Performance here at Brimbank City Council. Um, and Kate and Michelle are joining us as well from the community engagement team. And I'm sure you might have had some interaction with them already over your time. So I'd like to start on behalf of Brimbank Council acknowledging uh, the Wurundjeri and the Bunurong people as, as the traditional custodians of this land and pay my respects to their elders past, present and future. I'd also like to acknowledge any uh, Aboriginal or Torres Strait Islander people who are joining us today as well and recognise their continuing care for, and connection to country. So thank you very much for making the time on this um, quite chilly Monday evening. It's gone dark outside already, so I do appreciate you jumping online and joining us this evening. And this session, as I mentioned just before, it is being recorded. So for those um, who aren't able to join us at six o'clock or who for whatever reason couldn't jump on tonight, uh, they'll be able to um, catch up later. So if you don't want to be recorded, you're more than welcome to participate in the session with your camera off. And just while we're um, doing some introductions, um, if you could just keep your microphones on mute um, just for now so everyone can hear too. So we're really, really pleased that you've decided to continue with the Brimbank Community Voice to share your views and ideas and to help us shape Brimbank's future. And I can hear a ding dong, so we've got some more people joining us as well. So together, um, the we're really looking to increase the representation of diverse groups in our consultations and make sure that those voices are heard through our decision-making processes. So Council's job is to support the transformation of Brimbank into a beautiful, thriving, healthy and connected city. That's part of our, our community's vision and that's what we're trying to achieve as well through the delivery of our Council plan. And to achieve that vision, we need to work together. So whilst Council has a clear mandate from community, we also need you to continue to guide and support us to make sure that we're on the right track as well. So this group is here to help us design and deliver the services that meet your needs and the community's needs. And for those of you who have been with us from the start, it's nearly coming up to our one year since we were first since we first launched. And during this time, the panel members have had the opportunity to participate in a really wide array of projects across council business. So some of these um, have included our housing and neighbourhood character strategy, our biodiversity and sustainable water management strategy, and our planning for the council plan action plan for 24-25. And as you can see on the screen, we've also had a variety of surveys to help us understand your thoughts around communication, waste management and transport. So in total, we've asked for your help with nine different projects and we've had six workshops and, and the four surveys as well. And across these activities, panel members have shared their feedback 329 times. So I'd really like to thank you and acknowledge you for the work that you've done in making sure that your voice has been heard in those processes. Your feedback um, has been taken on board within council and it's been used to help us shape our decision-making and outcomes. And this helps us ensure that council's projects align with community's priorities and the expectations as well. So now, um, we have taken over the management of the Brimbank Community Voice. We plan to continue to offer you a range of different opportunities to be involved. And we really hope to continue working closely to build a stronger relationship between council staff and this group of dedicated community members. And I have to say, you are a really dedicated bunch. We've obviously um, asked you all to move across onto this new way of managing the Brimbank Community Voice. And we're really pleased that you have put up your hand and said yes to keep the conversation going. So given that we are approaching our one year anniversary, we're gonna be doing an evaluation of the program just to check in to see how we're tracking and, and to give you an opportunity to provide your feedback and your experience so far as a member of the panel. And this will also give us an opportunity for you to tell us what you wanna get out of participating in the panel in the future. And that will help us shape the year ahead. And we'll be thinking about how we could continually do things differently to improve how we work. So some of you might also know that this next, well, this year is um, a local government election year. So we'll be having elections uh, at the end of October. It's a postal um, ballot, so you don't have to front up, but we'll be asking you um, to vote for uh, people who you'd like representing in your area where you live, in your ward. 
And it's a really exciting time to be a member of the Brimbank Community Voice because what happens every time there's a new council elected is that we need to develop a new four-year council plan. So in the current economic climate, um, like it's, we've just had the state budget and the federal budget happen in the last two weeks, council's also facing some big challenges around service sustainability in the future and part of that is due to rate capping at state government level. So what we're really needing now more than ever is for community to work in partnership with us around how we prioritise our finite resources to make sure we're making the biggest impact for community. So as a Brimbank Community Voice member, you'll be invited to contribute your input into this process and you can help us to understand what we need to focus on for this next year in this new council term. So our current council vision is for a transformed Brimbank that is beautiful, thriving, healthy and connected. And our current focus, as you can see on the screen, includes four key strategic directions of people and community, places and spaces, opportunity and prosperity and leadership and governance. So with the development of the new council plan, we'll review the council vision and these focus areas, and this will be your chance to help us meaningfully shape the future direction of Brimbank. So I just really wanted to give you that um, introduction and overview today, and I really did want to reiterate my thanks to you for, um, for volunteering your time and being part of the, the um, Brimbank Community Voice. We really, we're looking forward to working with you again and continuing the relationship and hearing your feedback on what we've done well and what we can improve for next year. And um, we really welcome your ideas and views for the city. So I'm going to hand over to our community engagement team, to Kate and Michelle, who are going to run a question and answer session. Um, and the aim is we've got an hour scheduled with you, so we're hoping to finish at seven or before if if, um, if there's, you know, we get through that in the next little while. So thank you very much for your time tonight and i um, happy to chat any time if people would like some um, more information. Thank you. That is great. Thank you very much, Georgie. Um, and thank you also everyone for joining us today. We, as Georgie said, we do appreciate you taking your time out of your evening. This is just a great opportunity now that um, we are managing Brimbank Community Voice in-house for us to touch base with you, explain a bit about what has happened in the last year and what is happening in the year ahead, and also answer any questions that you might have. Um, I guess to, for anyone who hasn't met us, we thought we'd start with a bit of an introduction of your community engagement team, because we are now your main points of contact. Um, given that I'm speaking, I'll start with myself, because also quite often you're going to get me at the end of an email or at the end of a phone call. So I am the community engagement lead. Um, many of you may have seen me over the last year, particularly in the welcome events um, last year around this time. So you may have seen my face before. Um, as I said, if you email us with questions, if you call with questions, probably 80% of the time, you're gonna find yourself talking to me. Um, I've been with Brimbank for about two years now and really enjoying working with all of you in the community engagement space. Um, Michelle, I'll hand that one to you. Hey everyone, I'm Michelle Wellsby. I'm the coordinator of community engagement. Um, so I started at Brimbank uh, toward the end of, or middle of last year. So I think I've met some of you across a few workshops, but looking forward to meeting more of you as the next few years progress as well. Um, and looking forward to uh, yeah, working with you all um, yeah, in the next 12 months or so. Um, we also have Alana Whitehead, who is uh, part of our team, and she's the Digital Engagement and Communications Officer. Um, fortunately, she couldn't be here today, but you can see a lovely, lovely screenshot on the um, screen, so you, you can put a face to the name. Thanks, everyone. Yeah. And I think there was just a question from Patrick about having the, the slides available after the um, after today's webinar. I believe that's absolutely fine. We can share the slide deck as well. After. Sure. Yeah, very happy to share the slide deck. Um, and as we said, we will be recording this. So you can also access a recording of tonight too, if you want to go back and hear anything that was said. Okay, so... To kick things off, um, we thought we'd do a couple of quick polls to ask you some questions um, and get a feel for some, some feedback from you. So bear with me for just a moment while I launch them. Okay.
Okay, it should be loading now. Can everyone see a, a poll in front of you? Great if you could pick one of the options. Excellent, almost done. Just a few more people. Looks like we've got a few more people, but maybe that might be all we're getting. That's fine. Okay, so as we can see, most of you have participated in something. Um, one of you hasn't yet, but I'm sure is looking forward to the opportunity. Um, and a couple of people have said they're not sure, which I understand because um, you might have participated in something else at council, but not sure if it's through member and community voice. So that makes complete sense. Okay, we've got another poll. So what activity do you prefer out of the below options? Which You might like all of them, but which one's your favourite? This is great information for us for future planning. Okay, we have a clear winner pulling ahead. All righty, that looks like everyone. So... Um, by, by a large margin, people like workshops and focus groups, which we also prefer ourselves because it gives us a really good chance to talk to you a bit more in depth and get some really great insights and have richer discussions. So I would say that we share that sentiment, but it's good to know that we're on the right track in running workshops and focus groups. And that's how you want to be working with us. Okay. We've got another one, which is about how you prefer to participate in things. Okay, excellent. So we've got a winner. People prefer to come in person. So that's good for us to know as well. We do try and offer both in-person and online options. Um, so the last opportunity that you should hopefully have received an email about last week for our customer experience strategy, we are offering both online and in-person options. But again, it's just great for us to know what you like to do best. And the last one, is, oh, it's not going to work. So I have to stop the other poll. Okay, the last one is a quiz. So it has right and wrong answers. So which of these matters should you contact council about? Don't worry if you get them wrong. We're not actually grading you personally. I feel like I should do this quiz, Kate. <laughs> <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> So a quiz like this is good because it just gives us an understanding of how well um, people in Brimbeck Community Voice understand council and council services and what council is responsible for. Okay. Now, most people are on the right track. So um, for the most part, people have selected overgrown nature strips, dogs loose in the street, and a mist bin collection, which is absolutely correct. We're responsible for all of those things. A couple of people did select sewage issues or power line problems, but for matters like that, you would be selecting the um, contacting the power company, which I believe is Gemina, or um, the like sort of water companies for sewage issues. So that is the sort of little quizzes that we're going to do tonight. Just gives us a better understanding of remote community voice as a community and what your preferences are. And now we'd like to open the floor to questions. So. Um, Basically, if there's anything that you would like to ask Michelle, myself, Georgie, while we're here, um, anything you want to get clarified, um, this is your moment. You're welcome to take yourself off mute um, and ask any questions that you would like. Looks like Sydney's got a question. Is that a raised hand? One moment. You're on mute. Let me see if I can unmute you. Okay. Um, that's it. We um, when are we going to get an, another bin for glass? Oh, okay. So a, a separate fourth bin for glass. Yes. 
I have to say, I would have to come back to you on the exact rollout date for that. I'm not sure what the exact date is. I know that it has been set at a state level that it has to be implemented by a certain time. Mm. Um, Michelle, would you mind making a note to come back on to Just Sydney on that? I will. Yeah. Great. Thank you. Um, I think Shannon, your hand was up first. Thank you. Um, yeah, just a couple of things. One thing that has been mentioned a few times with the BCV is that it is looking looking for greater diversity. Um, however, I find that the uh, pre-enrollment questionnaire or survey, if you will, um, if that's what you want to call it, is quite limiting in what data it's actually capturing, yes. um, which could explain why you're not getting the diversity that you're seeking. Um, something that comes up quite often is, so if you're looking for members of the cold community, for example, it's represented by a question that asks if you were born in Australia or not. Um, that kind of limits who can participate. So for example, I was born in Australia, my father was not. <laughs> so I'm still very much a member of the cold community. Um, but because I'm answering, I was born in Australia, you're not capturing me as a uh, culturally diverse person. Um, so that's, it's a bit limiting in what it's sort of asking. Yeah. Um, another example is it doesn't always ask about the GLBTIQA plus community, um, which again could be another minority group that's being missed. Um, religious minority groups are never asked, so it doesn't actually give you an opportunity to provide information such as that. Um, and the other one is it doesn't separate person with a disability uh, from a person who is neurodivergent. Um, a lot of neurodiverse people will not actually identify as disabled um, and are not comfortable in calling themselves disabled. So it can actually, again, skew the data that you might be hoping um, to sort of get. Uh, so that's just something that I've picked up several times when doing, you know, those uh, pre-surveys that's come up. Um the other thing that I just wanted to mention was with regards to online consultations is, and potentially this is why people are preferring to do in person, uh, when there has been an online consultation in a group, I believe the session was an hour and a half long from memory, it actually, because it was so short, A, was cutting people off. So people would be mid-sentence and be forced out of their breakout rooms and forced back into the major one. And at the same token, other members that were in those breakout rooms never got a chance to actually speak, meaning you've actually got participants that have attended whose opinions have not been captured at all because time was cut short. So the issue is that if you're going to have double the amount of participants online as what you do in person, which is 15, uh, 15 to 30 ratio, really online should be longer. You've got more participants to hear from. So it shouldn't be shorter. It should be longer. If, if that's how it's going to go. Um, otherwise, we it needs to be perhaps done a little bit differently, maybe not breakout rooms and making sure that a response is captured for every single participant that is online in the broader group um, to ensure that there are no cutoffs and that everybody's got a chance to provide that feedback. Otherwise, again, you're not actually capturing the feedback that you were hoping to do so in the consultation. So I know my experience with doing it online if I had a chance uh, to go in person and I had a choice of it and disability wasn't an issue for me, I'd be choosing in person based on that experience because there were many people that were cut off, myself included, and it was just not a great consultation. In fact, to be perfectly honest with you, probably the worst I've ever participated in anywhere. So when you, and I've had other people say, I didn't even get a chance to talk because they were just cut off. It was, you know, here's a couple of minutes and then we're going to throw you back into the main room and sorry, anyone who missed out. So doesn't really work to capture everybody's opinion. So if they're going to participate, we need to make sure that everybody's um, actually being heard from or anybody who wishes to speak is being heard from anyway. Thanks. Thanks for sharing that feedback, Shannon. And I could see Michelle was taking notes. Um, so particularly in regards to um, the demographics when you're signing up for things, uh, you're, you're definitely correct. Um, identifying someone's cultural background um, is challenging sometimes in regards to how we ask questions because there's also a balance of not asking questions that people will find invasive um, as part of the evaluation we're doing next month um, there's actually a question in there around the information we ask when you register and whether you think that information is appropriate so it'll be a great opportunity to put all of that feedback in there and say actually I think that um, you should ask these types of questions 
because also we were a bit worried that people would say, actually, you're asking too much information about me. So it's yeah. about striking that happy balance. Um, oh, 100%, but- Kate, I completely agree. Maybe just having a prefer not to answer as, as an option as well would allow people that want to to do it and the people that don't want to do it don't. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, yeah, that's great feedback. Um, thank you, Shannon. Um, Michelle's made notes and you'll definitely be able to put that in to the um, evaluation when it comes out um, sort of probably late June. Um, and in regards to the online consultations, that's also good feedback for us to have. It, again, it's a tricky balance because people don't like to sit at their computer for two hours all of the time. It's hard to focus on a screen for that long. And so that's why we do tend to make them shorter. But if it is um, limiting people's opportunities to, to provide meaningful input, that's good for us to know. Um, and again, we can continually review how we're doing things. So yeah, thank you for that feedback. Yeah, um, no worries. I just thought, you know, again, I, I totally understand some people get a bit, bit uh, you know, with time, it's a bit of an issue, but I suppose the other thing is that if people need to leave, they can leave as well. If they don't want to participate any longer than the hour and a half, as long as we're not cutting people off. So, you know, there's always an yeah. option, <laughs> but no, I appreciate that, Kate. Thanks, Shannon. Um, I'm going to go to Patrick next and then Robin, I can see your hand after Patrick. Okay. So I'll go to Patrick yes. next. Thank you. Um, <clears throat> my question is, in selecting the uh, agenda, if you like, or the criteria for discussion, are we getting in? Are we involving the people of Brimbank? Are we asking them what they want resolution on, or are we purely basing it on the uh, the, the Brimbank vision plan? That is a great question, Patrick. Um, I would say that's very insightful of you to ask that question. Um, so at the moment, we're mostly asking you and basing our agendas on projects that we are running that we would like you to put impact um, feedback into. You'll find that um, later this year, as we start consulting on the council plan, that will be more about what do you want to tell us and what issues do you want to raise? Because that'll be a much, um, I guess, longer in depth um, look at what are we going to do for four years as a council? And that will be a really great opportunity for you to tell us and kind of set the agenda with us about what I guess you want to tell council and what is a priority for council. So that should create more of those opportunities. And we'd like to create more opportunities in the future as we build on this program for you to help tell us what matters to you and what, rather than us just always saying, this is what we're doing. What do you think about it? So that's our, yeah, where we want to go in the future. Uh, Robin? Yes, look, um, actually Patrick, Patrick's question um, covered some of my question. Um, so that, and you've answered part of it, just saying that, um, Later on, the council plan will look at broader issues and more what we want to talk about. I will focus on, because my question was about sort of a broader issue of just like, it relates to the the overarching um, aim of the program or, or the aim of council to improve our area, make it more beautiful, et cetera. It's about safety. Um, on the street in the centre of St Albans, where I live. Um, there's illegal trading going on. It's there, it's visible. It's unbelievable that nothing's happened or it just keeps going. So is that the sort of thing that we are going to be able to talk about in this group? Because it's actually hard to find out how you actually um, can do anything about that. I would say um, in regards to planning for the future, safety and beautification of areas will be a really big priority. Um, yeah. we, we were recently out talking to community about the council plan for the next year ahead and safety repeatedly came up in those discussions as well as beautification of the area, parkland, lighting, things like that to create a sense of community and place and make people feel safe and welcomed into an area. So that was coming out just from us being out in shopping centres and speaking to people that came out really clearly um, there. So I think as we consult about the council plan and our focus areas for the next four years, I imagine that will continue to come out and we will have discussions around what builds safety, what does safety look like for you um, yeah. and what is council's role in promoting safety? Okay, because I, I know there was a, a community forum with the police, which I couldn't get to. Um, and, you know, there is an issue with this sort of stuff. It's 
in different ways, uh, for a number of reasons, that it's illegal to start with, all the sort of illegal street vendors, like people with sort of rucksacks with stuff they're putting on the footpath trying to sell and abusing people as they go past, um, creating crowding, kind of, it, it's, it's really changed the atmosphere. Um, but also, like, how do we do anything about stopping it? I mean, it, it just, I don't know. And, you know, I know that this isn't the right forum to solve that problem, but I want to know, is this the right place to bring this up in terms of planning or measures that can be put in place to stop it? Or do we have, or do I have to pursue that some other way? I would say, uh, oh, Georgia, you've just gone off mute. It looks like you've yeah. got something to say. Oh, I was just going to add um, that, yeah, we are, council is very much aware of, um, and, you know, as Kate's mentioned, we're hearing it a lot through community, through our engagements that we are having directly with community, not just through the voice, mm -hmm. um, that it is a priority area. We've just recently, I think maybe 12 months ago, started a, um, or refreshed our partnership with Victoria Police as well. So we've got the Brimbank um, safety and wellbeing partnership. Obviously, as you mentioned, there was a forum last week, but that that there is a lot of continuing work, and I can say that there is quite a lot of focus on the St Albans area as well at the moment. Um, so, I, and you know, hearing your feedback tonight, I'm also happy to pass that on and make yes, sure that that's yes. considered. But if there are other, I mean, that is something that we can we can talk more um, about whether there's other opportunities mm. around consultations on safety that might be coming up as well. Mm. So obviously it is a really hot topic for community. Um, it's one of those ones where sometimes the more you talk about it, it actually exacerbates pe people's feelings of, of um, being unsafe as well. But it is something that we, no, we are really? aware of it. I well, think I, think, so. oh, I think sometimes that then um, it can... It, obviously safety is about perceptions of safety as well as what's happening in reality and sometimes it can um, it can exacerbate things but I think there is a there's a way that you can have a careful conversation with community about it so I'm not saying we, we wouldn't do it because of that but I, we are conscious of wanting to um, oh, actually is that enhance why safety nothing happening there because oh no not at all raising community um, fear or something. No, not at all. No, I was just saying that it is it's it is something that we're taking very seriously and we are working in partnership with the police and um it's not in my area, but I'm happy to have a chat about um, you know, to talk about what we can do further in that space to make sure community voices are being heard. Okay. Thanks, Georgie. Um, okay, we might go to Sangeeta next. Hi, um hi everyone, I'm new. Um, so I have two things. Um, first of all, just in relation to the to the last person that spoke, um, sorry, I forgot your name, but I did attend the um, police forum and it was really great. I think a lot of the um, community feeling from that um, forum was, yes, you know, there's a lot of work that's been done behind the scenes, but I think it's just, and the police did recognise this is just making us um, aware of what those works are in order to make us feel safe that there are works being done um, at a grassroots level, helping us to understand because it is all about working in partnerships. So it's working from state, federal, local government and community. So as much as there's a lot of work being done behind the scenes, we don't actually know what those works are. So having discussions um, with us um, about some of the works helps bring some ease into what council's doing you know we've heard from the mps what they're doing we've heard from the police what they're doing so it just sort of brings a sense of like um concerns of safety um and fear and anxiety reduces that down that there are some great things happening and great works being taken into account that's the first thing and the second thing is um because i'm new on this um i'm not too sure if there's any within the year of things that you guys have achieved and discussions and and so I thought that you've had, is there some way, so I don't have to repeat things that you guys already talked about, is there some way that, is there a newsletter or is there some sort of information that you can access as to in terms of what achievement and goals that you've have achieved within the um, Bring Bank Boys so that I'm aware of what's been happening within this group? Yeah, great question, Sangeeta. And it's very timely because um, we are overdue for a newsletter. Um, we are planning to bring one out um, it would probably be hopefully early June we're aiming for, 
and that newsletter we want to cover off on the consultations that have happened to date and the outcomes of the involvement from this group in those consultations so that people can see how their voice is having an impact and how it is being utilized at council so you'll be on that you'll, re you'll receive that newsletter as well so you'll be able to see what people have been saying to date and how we've been using that feedback and for everyone else who has participated, that will also be coming to you. So you'll be able to see if you haven't had an update yet, you'll be able to see what ways your feedback has been used. Does anyone else want to say anything or have any questions? Yeah, I might have a go if that's okay. Yeah, great. Uh, yeah, Jason in Deer Park. Um, I just wonder, yeah, what encouragement you can give us to, um, as individuals to think, have that bigger picture um, perspective on things. I, I mean, I'm assuming most people in the group do the same thing I do. You walk along each day, you see the, you know, perhaps the rubbish or um, the long grass on nature strips, and you really want your own specific area to be more presentable, more safer. I guess, yeah, how, how would you encourage us all to have that bigger picture um, view of things? And, you know, we are a very diverse um, uh, com uh, community with, with several different towns that are, are quite different from one another. Yeah, definitely. Uh, I think a great way to have a bigger picture view is to keep participating and keep listening because the more opportunities that you put your hand up for, the more different voices you will hear from different suburbs and different communities in Brimbank. And so you will hear more about what's happening in different areas. And you'll also start to think about Brimbank as a whole and as a municipality and what actions do, can we take to uplift the whole area. Um, and by continuing to participate in particularly things like strategies and big workshops like that that ask you to think really big picture, um, those workshops usually will give you questions to help prompt that thinking. So it should help build that over time where you really start to look at Brimbank as a whole. Um, I know I do understand, though, in, even in my own area, I walk my dog a lot. So I'm always thinking about the dog parks and what I want to see for the dog parks. Um, you know, looking in the budget at the end of the year, what are they doing with my local dog park? So I, I think that way, too. Um, but also, yeah, I think continuing to participate in different workshops and hearing different voices and being, I guess, pr um, prompted to answer strategic questions will really help to build that bigger strategic mindset for and like big picture mindset for Brimbank. Thanks, Kate. No worries. Does anyone else have any questions or comments? This is your chance, captive audience. <laughs> no? Oh, Shannon, your hand is up again. Yeah, just a very quick comment um, just with regards to what Robin was raising earlier. Um, I just wanted to let her know that I too didn't uh, manage to get to the police forum because it was in person. However, I'm currently working with the Brimbank Melton Police Division to bring one online. So you may get a chance to still go to um, one of those uh, community forums still. So there'll be another one coming up later. So I will try and keep you posted if you like. Um, yeah, just reach out. Excellent. Thank you, Shannon. That's a great offer. Um, any, I guess, last call for questions or comments? Anything from anyone? No pressure. No. Um, well, this is, I guess, so we'll, we will wrap up tonight with just a reminder that we did send out an expression of interest for a customer experience strategy workshop coming up in June. So if you haven't see, um, seen those emails, I would encourage you to go and take a look. It is a great um, opportunity to influence, I guess, how we plan for improving your experience as customers of Brimbank in the future. So, yeah, you can get in early. It's a really good opportunity. So do take a look at those emails. Um, I think I just saw that you've shared your email address, Shannon, for Robin. Um, well, I guess we will wrap up for tonight. Um, we'll give you all an early mark. Everyone's always happy to get a few extra minutes in their day, I think. Um, if you do have any last questions, anything you didn't want to ask in front of the group, you are welcome to hang around. Um, I'll stay online for a couple of minutes. But otherwise, I hope you all have a lovely evening and stay warm on these chilly weeks. Everyone. Thank you very much for your time tonight. Thank you. Thank you all for attending.